such a time as this. And welcome, welcome to to for such a time as this round table. As always, want to encourage you to go to our webpage for such a time as this dot today. For such a time as this dot today, not dot com, not dot org, dot today. For such a time as this dot today, there you can always find our newest and greatest materials, always looking at the world through a biblical lens. If you're out there, please give me a thumbs up. Please give me a thumbs up as though uh, to let us know that we are coming in loud and clear. The church in Babylon, how shall we now live? We have a panel here, uh, St. Abby, St. Joan, and St. Chris. St. Abby produced this today, so St. Abby, Take this away, the church in Babylon, how shall we now live? Okay, so just to let you know, the church in Babylon is a book written by um, Dr. Erwin Lutzer, and probably most of you are familiar with him. Um, he was the pastor of Moody Church for decades, I believe. We we like him here at New Hope. I do think he is a, he is a solid, unlike so many others that have turned out to be hirelings. <laughs> I th do think Pastor Lutzer, and I think we agree that he is he is a good man, he is a godly man, and he, st he truly stands for Christ. He has a lot of wisdom. But anyway, he wrote this book in 2018. Uh, before the COVID craziness, um, but I, I had it on my shelves and I grabbed it the other day because uh, once again, I was frustrated <laughs> We've kind of had this ongoing discussion, shall we say, as um, it's been going at on, I would say, Pastor James, actually a number of years because uh, we have been watching just the disintegration of the culture and um, basically the country being torn apart, I, I would say deliberately, um, yep. uh, for, for a long time now. And so I struggle with, I don't think, Pastor James, that you struggle much with it, but I know I'm not the only one. I think but you might be. <laughs> well, well, we'll find out tonight. <laughs> I'm joking. I know you're not. I know you're not. I know you're not. So, uh, you know, I, I, I struggle with anger now and then and with, um, I'm not sure exactly how to put it. I, I've, I've given up watching the blow-by-blow day-to-day news. Because I just, it, I sit there and I just, I can just, my whole body, I can just feel my whole body just get. Now see, see, Paul, let, let's introduce these concepts now. Frustration is, the definition of frustration is what? Unmet expectations, right? You get mm -hmm. frustrated when, when, when you expect something and you don't get it. So you mm -hmm. say you've given up watching the day by day blow the news. What are you expecting the news to give you? Fair and balanced. <laughs> and if that's what you and if that's your expectation, I feel sorry for you. It used to be until I noticed they weren't giving me fair and balanced, right? Oh, oh right? yeah, not even not even yeah. Fox is giving anybody. Right, right. Anybody and that's what I'm saying. So, so you say you've given up on on watching I, the news day to day by day. Too painful. Same here. So what, what do you mean give give up? What what were you hoping the news give you day to day? Well. I, okay, let me, let me just say, okay, I, I've ahead. never been someone who's followed blow by blow uh, uh, with the news in general, yep. uh, because it it's just never interested me that much, but I have specific areas of interest, <laughs> mm -hmm. like freedom, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, and so I can't eat, like even Tucker Carlson, who I, I think Tucker Carlson is a public servant <laughs> at this point. He, mm -hmm. uh, he really has my respect. I think he is very courageous and he's truthful to the to the extent that he understands the truth Correct. and he's he's his show is great but I can't even watch that anymore because I just get very up I get upset the and topics. I don't want to It's not him that gets you upset it's yes, what he he's revealing Exactly yep. exactly what he, yes what what he's revealing It's mm -hmm. it's what you're expressing is something that Sorry. What you're expressing is something that's not new with the news. The news has always been had a bias. Always. The, the term yellow, yellow journalism is over 100 years old True. with, um, what's his name, and, and getting us into the Spanish-American War. 
by oh, by writing. Roosevelt? No, was it wasn't Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Was it? Hearst. Um, yes, thank you. Oh. William Randolph Hearst and his yellow journalism. Um, I just read an article about um, the New York Times and other news organizations and their denial of the Holocaust while it was going on, the reports coming out right. of Germany. Durante, Walter Durante. And, and oh, no, well, well, something you know, else. Well, that's no, not that really Stalin. true. And so journalism and, and the media has never been this fair and balanced, we're going to present the news, the, all the news fit to print and all the other. They have their bias as well. Always have, always will. And, and I think what I hope it's revealing is you eat the meat, spit out the bones. You watch the news for, for what you want to keep up on, but make sure that you, you always are skeptical of somebody screaming something. What's your agenda? What are you trying to promote? I, I, I apologize. I think I got Abby off track as we were introducing oh. <laughs> what the night is. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So. No, that no, that's okay. But I did want to say that's part of it. That I I I just get I it just upsets me. It, I get anxious. I get the news. Does um, the news? Is that what you're saying? Y- yes, the real news about what's really happening. Well, I don't even I don't even watch the other. <laughs> How do you even know? <laughs> because there's no news there. You, Chris, you said um, uh, eat the meat, spit out the bones. There's no more meat there. In some some places, there are no there is no more meat. Yeah, it, it's all bones. But anyway, so. My question has been just for the longest time. So what 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 attitude should I be aspiring here to? You, you know, as a Christian, how am I how am I supposed to look at this? Because if you look at it like, oh well, that's just that's just you know that's unbelievers doing what unbelievers do, and et cetera, et cetera. It almost seems like that doesn't seem any better to me. I agree. Uh, b- I don't understand what you're saying. It be, can you, being can you, lukewarm about can it. You, can you give yeah, me like an example? Yeah, like who cares? Yep. Yeah, the, you know, they're, they're giving, you know, they're, now they're giving, they're killing babies. They're um, teaching kids to be racist in school. Um, they're giving yep. the shot to Check. everyone, including Check. little kids. Right. But to be uh, blasé and apathetic about that well it's just what, unbelievers what, what, what do you expect from them like like not caring that's not i know that's not quite the right attitude either you know what i'm saying it no. seems like we need to ca- we should care about sure these care. things yes sure we care so that's kind of so i'm just going around in circles kind of <laughs> so, so what's the problem What's I don't maybe there isn't maybe it is just a maybe in during times like historical times like this maybe they're just I'm not experiencing a, seeing a whole lot of peace I will say that is anybody else am I hanging out here all by no, myself? You're not, you're not, nope. you're yes, not you are. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> you know that God's peace that surpasses all understanding right. and all that. Um, but if, if you're too placid, on the other hand, right. it just seems like you so don't, you it, don't it, care. Here's the agree. thing. Ex- Lukewarm ex- isn't good either. No. Explain explain the conundrum to, to the audience here. What what exactly are you complaining about or what exactly are you upset about or what exactly is going on here? I want to know. Yes. Okay. Here. Put up the slide. This pretty much... This is a quote from the book written by Dr. Lutzer. Oops. Slide number one. How do we respond to conflicts of conscience in a pagan culture? We can self-righteously shout to the people around us to get off our moral turf. We can even become angry evangelicals. Angry because our freedoms are being taken away. Check. This is me. Angry because of corrupt politicians. Check. Angry because of judges who legislate their own bias rather than taking the Constitution seriously. Check. In short, we can be angry because our culture often needlessly forces us into an ethical corner, whether we like it or not. And I want to focus, you know, focus on the word needlessly because all this stuff that's going on right now from the boat sitting off the shore of California to the mandated vaccines to it's all needless uh, to the 
economy and the and the inflation and empty shelves it is was all created it's all needless oh, yeah. it it's makes on, me it's on purpose what, what do you mean by Crazy. needless it's on purpose it was What's yes it on? was done on it would not have happened it was a manu it's oh, all yeah. been manufactured yeah well, the the starting of the shutdown of our pipeline and now we're Right. Dependent yes, on it, uh, Russian gas, a... right there is uh, inflation, right there, right there. Yes. So that's needless. I totally agree with you. I mean, done on purpose. Done so on purpose. the question is, what kind of an attitude am I supposed to be aspiring to here? What does faithfulness look like in a nation that has lost its way? You know. So our role as Christians is to spread the good news, and we start with. We are sinners in need of a Savior, pointing out where the sin is and, and leading us in the direction of, we need a Savior. There's nothing we can do to save this culture. Only God can do that, if he, that's what he wants. The culture will, if, and James, you're a wonderful historian, would agree, all the cultures are, 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 have fallen in the same direction of, of this destruction and evil and, and moving away from God. Even the Israelites did, right? How many judges did he send because they kept turning away from him or begging for a king? Right. So it, it's not, un, it's not some, anything You're new right. as much as in our response, it's, it's okay to be angry as long as it doesn't cause us to sin and that it doesn't become what we're about, being angry about it. Mm -hmm. It should help. Abby, it should motivate us to let me share the good news of how to deal with those things. Abby, are you saying that you think that in some way you're sinning because of your attitude? I mean, are you walking around just a, 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 a hop, skip, and a jump away from murdering someone? I mean, no, what, what, what no, are you? No, no, no. I know that, I but think, I'm just saying. I think she's saying is that. What's this? It's mostly internal strife, I think, because yep. I, I keep my mouth shut a lot. Uh, I mean, when it comes to not around here so much. Yeah, not around here. We but it, at home, you know, um, I'm It can I'm be overwhelming. First, and I don't know how right. much to say because they don't see it the way I see it and they can't they haven't come to the realizations of how dire this is really right, going right, to be yet so again what's the what, what, so what's the problem we all know this world is dark it's it's ruled by the god of this world we would not expect anything else um Christ said in this lifetime you will have trials and tribulation anyone who wishes to live a godly life will be persecuted where's the problem are you, are you expecting something different? Are you expecting to live in this world in total bliss and peace because everyone's living in harmony and doing what's right? With, no. So what's the problem? Maybe I'm still not what's getting What's the it. whole problem with the United States right now? I mean, I just had heard that. Ruled by sinful men. Right. Well, That's what's wrong with the United right, States. That's right. what's wrong, yep. And then, then I hear that. There's an awful lot of people going to counseling right now. You know, they're they're saying that's all that's all up, and um, and you know, I I look at myself. I I say in the morning, do I listen to some podcasts before I even read my Bible? Do I not say hello to God in the morning because I want to see what's going on with? maybe a trial that's going on right now <laughs> and I'm so I have to check myself because um, I realized I'm getting dragged into the drama and I'm not going to where I know that I'll not that I, I even am going to have peace about what's going on in this world but boy I sure know I sure know who has everything in control who knows everything who will not allow anything to happen unless he, you know, he allows it, right? He's not right. going to do so, it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm saying is I have to make a conscious decision sometimes, a lot of times, to, to start my morning off correctly instead of wanting to see what happened, you know, in the news or listen to somebody's podcast so or something. So, Joan, are you saying as a Christian living in this world, Sometimes you don't get angry. 
oh about my. what's going on. Oh, no, that's what I'm saying. That's why I would rather go and listen to a podcast. Because you do get angry. Uh, yeah, I'd rather listen to podcasts, want to know what's going on in a quote-unquote trial that might be happening like right now. And, <laughs> and mm-hmm. I want to know, you know, what happened. Is is Kenosha on fire again? Um, no, I do. I do get angry. Oh, my goodness, do I get angry. So, Abby, there's a question on the table. As Christians, is that the correct response to get angry when Kenosha's going to burn? Kenosha's going to burn. It's going to burn. No, it's not. Yeah, I think it is. No, it isn't. Uh, I think it is. We're, I'm praying we'll that it won't. Oh, you can pray. Um, <laughs> and, and we can pray. But here's the thing. But see, here we go. Here we go. Unrealistic expectations. If Kenosha is root, the only reason why Rittenhouse is on, on trial right Uh-oh. now, because the police refuse to do their job. The police let Kenosha burn yes. purposely, mm-hmm. and this young man was trying to put out fires. That's the reason why they went after him. On purpose. On purpose. So so that's crazy in and of itself. Yeah. The the police and the firemen should be on trial, not him. Right? And 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 right. And, 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 and they're deliberating a trial in which the video, the boy was running away from them. So so that doesn't anger me because Kenosha is ruled by evil men. It's crazy. Kenosha's going to burn Joan unless God, it, uh, uh, again, I don't know what God is going to allow. Right. But exactly. to expect I can't speak for good God things yeah. from a crazy governor in Wisconsin who purposely let Kenosha burn, purposely let Kenosha right. burn, to a, to a DA who's dishonest, why are you expecting anything different than Kenosha burning? Can I just can I just say something? Yeah. You know, I I still am with I, I'm not an okay. I had this discussion and mm-hmm. the person said I'm an optimist. Mm-hmm. And I said I'm a pragmatist, okay? Yes. So I I you know, there's I I'm not going to say that I'm being optimistic mm-hmm. about Kenosha. Mm-hmm. But boy, I saw what David did and how he prayed. Talk and about it's King like, David? Yes. You talking about the man after God's own heart? Is he in I'm, Kenosha? Is he in Kenosha today? No, but I'm just saying oh, okay. is why okay. why why does why do things happen? I mean, it's because we're not asking. We're not asking mm. God, uh, you know, hey, will you intercede in this? Mm. Will you intercede with in this? And I I pray to God, will you please intercede? Send your messengers, see, your fiery angels see, and he, intercede and Freeze unless, those people out tomorrow. See, unless and, it's for his purpose. Right, of course. Exactly. Of course. And so here's, here's my of thing, course. too. Why do we think God is not in Kenosha already? He is. Why do we think God is not allowing Kenosha to burn because of divine judgment? Again, we may be in 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 Jerusalem in the days of Jeremiah. Yeah, Jeremiah. I know. We, we could very well be. And, and what is it about Kenosha? Again, Believe it or not, I am an optimist by nature, but I'm a pragmatist. Yeah, right. Me I'm too. a pragmatist. And 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 here's a question we have to ask. Why would God relent at this point after all that America has done and is doing? What is it about Kenosha that, that Kenosha is not ripe for divine judgment? Or this country? The whole country. It, 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 exactly. So... I, I don't know whether or not Kenosha will burn. I'm just reading the tea leaves. Oh. Evil prosecutor, yeah. crazy governor, weakless, spineless governor. Um, you're, what makes me think oh, it's not going to burn? You're going by logic. Okay. I, okay. Uh, <laughs> Let me ask you this, yes. Pastor James. Yes. Does any of this ever make you angry? <laughs> Why would it? So you're saying no, you never like listen to Tucker Carlson and just get mad at what's going on. Why would I? Okay. So See, are you I'm, I'm you're ask, saying I'm no? Ask you, I'm Terry. asking you the question. Uh, again, failed expectations. Failed expectations. I, I, think, I don't expect. I, 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 I know. I know what I do, and I think James, you're the same way. Yeah. There is a there is a measured amount of anger, but not to the point where I lose focus on. What it should remind me to do, right? Correct. To pray no. for those people that they need to know who the savior of the world is. Yes, there is a certain level of anger that we all can avoid. Yes, we can. Apparently, or frustration. We can. Yeah, we can. So here's my thing. Again, yeah. again. Oh, here's my question. Here's my question. Let me. And I'll throw it back on you. 
I can tell you why I don't get angry. Because I don't expect anything different from a situation with the God of this world. People, they're mutilating, they're chopping healthy body parts off of young boys who thinks they're girls. Okay. Right, and that doesn't make you angry either. Oh, that's 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 evil, and it's crazy. Right, it's crazy. This is the world we live in. Why would you expect anything different from a country that is cutting male body parts off of children, who who, who celebrate gay marriage, who is now trying to mainstream pit of pedophilia? Listen, I think it's evil, and I I I'm looking forward to some degree of Jesus coming back no and right. judging. Right. But here's mm-hmm. my thing. Mm-hmm. Why am I angry? I expect. Are you angry when the sun because rises in the so east? Because it's so wrong. Wait, wait. Because uh, they're of hurting it's wrong. people. Of, of course it's wrong. It absolutely. And they're hurting wrong. innocent people. In a lot of cases, There's a lot of people who are committing suicide. And mm-hmm. listen, and, and, and to, and to and I, that, that doesn't anger you. That to, to that, I would get. I get angry if 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 it's in my sphere of influence. Here's my thing. Here's what I learned. Here's what I learned working on psychiatric unit. You only have so much amount of, of emotional capital before you go crazy. Why? Would, yes, it's evil and it's wrong. And if it's in my sphere of influence, I will react. But here's my thing. What good is it to get angry? First of all, a lot of my anger is tempered in this. Expectations. I expect in a country ruled by Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and half the Republicans who are really Democrats and just have R behind their names, I don't expect anything good. Why would I expect anything good from the United States of America today when the, the, the standard of, of, of conservatism in this country, i.e. Donald Trump, who was quote-unquote pro-life, gave Planned Parenthood $500 million? Yeah. Excuse me, pro-life? Really? Mm-hmm. See, I think I think people get upset when they have failed expectations and they think something's going to happen irregardless of the facts and they're upset when it doesn't happen. I'm not upset when the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. I expect it every morning. I don't expect anything differently. I think a lot of times the source of anger that Abby is experiencing, and uh, many, many, many other. And by the way, I recognize I'm in the minority. I recognize that Abby's in a great majority. But but I, I, I for 10 years working on that psychiatric unit, I analyzed the emotions backwards and forwards, up, down, left, right, all over. And I recognize this. If people let their emotions just run away with them, they will end up on a psychiatric unit sooner or later. Mm-hmm. And Go ahead. Especially when it's unrealistic. There you go. I when think you, that's what you, what drives all of it is exactly, we we have exactly. unrealistic expectations no, no. Exactly. that politicians become angels when they get elected or to office. Or you expect politicians or to be judges honest. or judges become honest angels or but but they're not. But and they're in they're <laughs> in place. I the and best because is yet they to come, want to Chris, of oh, absolutely of course. <laughs> Absolutely. But it's not when evil men rule. It's when Christ returns and right. rules us. Right. Yes. So, but so. I'm sorry. No. We're from, we're, I, I've always been a, a constitutionalist. Yep. I've never been a conservative. I've always believed that the Constitution was going to be there. Oh, I'm sorry. When something I'm like sorry this you feel that now way. that's no, that was I think that was a realistic expectation. Really but since now, when? See, no, that's, that's, that's the conversation me and Chris had all the time. Oh, well, I've about never the been privy I said, Chris, to they don't this. care about the constitution. They don't care about the constitution. Well, obviously well, now. I never said they cared about it. Well, said we have still. three three branches of government plus a new one, which is the health. What, what, the health. Now, what do you mean? Uh, care. No, it's under the executive branch. Oh, it doesn't matter. It, it's talking like about the administrative branch. branch. Yeah, She's yeah. talking about practicalities. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I so no, no, no. All of a sudden, this all of a sudden just hit me blindsided. So it's like my expectations of uh, going yep. along from year to year, mm-hmm. all the way up until this COVID thing hit. I I didn't realize really what was going on here. So if you truly expect evil. From evil men. Why do you get angry? That that's my that's my question to the majority of people who are in Abby's boat. If you expect evil 
from evil men. Why do you get upset when evil comes? I'd rather be angry than sad. Or melancholy why do you have to, or Why do you have to be both? Because I, because you're right. If you're like in the this, this psychiatric ward, you're, I, don't you have to pick one or the other? No, I'd you don't. I'd rather be no, angry I don't because I don't want to be going cuckoo because I'm depressed about this whole thing. Why do you have to be depressed? You, you, what you do is you set your because hope. I live with people you who get set depressed, your hope not full, me. <laughs> you set your hope fully on the revealing of Jesus Christ. Well, yeah. I okay, do. so I look at them. I say, they're crazy. They'll get theirs. Oh, Evil men. That's what it, I always judgment's say. Judgment's coming. You, you say that? In my mind, yeah. I say that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So then why am I angry then? See, see the emotions. Why, why the emotions if you say, I expect evil from evil men and evil right. men will be judged? But where I does the, fight, where does the okay, anger? I want to fight, yeah, fight anger. this. I don't want them. You want to fight what? I want to fight these evil people. What well, can you fight them to the best of your ability, right. recognizing you're going to lose? Right. Because the world right. has to descend yes. into chaos in order. In my eschatology, yeah, I, I agree. That Christ will come back. And and that is uh, that is where Pastor Luther came down. Let me just Thank ask you, you a quick, <laughs> just a quick question, <laughs> yeah. Pastor James. So if Kyle Rittenhouse. If he were a friend of yours or the son of a friend of yours or whatever, mm-hmm. would you be angry about that situation? Yeah, because it's close now. Okay. It's in, my, right. it's in okay. my sphere of influence. I think we've gotten somewhere. It's that, in my sphere of influence. Yeah, okay. What, what's, what's illuminating? The fact that if, it, if it's in your sphere, yeah. then, you will get, then you will get angry. You yeah. would be angry. Yeah, what, what, you, know, you know how many injustices take place all around the world we oh, can't take that can't on even. no you're we go you're crazy right. we'd go crazy okay but i think that was helpful to know you don't want to know what do you mean what james would be doing if that was my son and they had the video yeah, of him our, running our away don't want to know her either no, they don't i think know. we better not yeah, go there let's not go there you're right. okay <laughs> You're right. Let's not go there. It's a different roundtable discussion. Yes, it is. But it's it's the same thing we've been talking about for years. So I thought it was worth talking about. But anyway, right. back to the book, because I I actually I thought this book was it helped put things in perspective. So if you put up number two, mm-hmm. so what I, I ask, what kind of an attitude am I supposed to be aspiring to? And, and really what I'm asking, too, is um, these two questions. The, it was two out of three questions that he said was the reason he wrote the book, to answer these questions. And A it is, what does faithfulness look like in a nation that has lost its way, a nation that appears to be under the judgment of God? And I think probably everybody at this table would agree with that at this point. What? That what? That, that this, our nation is under judgment. Would we agree with that? Wouldn't we? Because if we agree with that, we would get angry when we see things. Oh, no, I'm let's sorry. not go, go ahead. Let's I'm not sorry. go backwards. Go ahead. You're right. Go ahead. You're right. We're, We're going to continue moving We're not forward. Go You're right. You're right. You're right. Go ahead. And two, what instructions might Christ give us as we prepare ourselves for the darkness that is closing around us and the deeper darkness that is on its way? Buy more ammo. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Talk about a tangent. <laughs> We're not going down that road either. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So Pastor Lutzer, well, he was a pastor. He, now I'll just call him doctor. Dr. Lutzer says in his book that we must live in the culture and even engage it without becoming contaminated by it. Yes. And as his model for this, basically, he goes to um, Israel when they were taken um, into Babylon, and specifically, um, he talks a lot about Daniel and his friends. Mm-hmm. So I thought this was very helpful, just getting perspective. So mm-hmm. he sets the scene. So I, I think a- any of us, all of us who know our Bibles, know that the Babylonians laid siege to Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. They actually showed up a number of times there and um, the, and carted people off to Babylon, mm-hmm. uh, those that they didn't kill and those that didn't die mm-hmm. um, by starvation um, in the siege and, and disease and everything else. Mm-hmm. Psalm 137 says that the Babylonians dashed their little ones against the rocks and killed them. Um, I think we can probably assume that um, Israelite women were raped. 
their homes were destroyed, the temple was destroyed, this gold was stolen by the Babylonians. They even carted off the utensils from the temple. Mm -hmm. And um, they took the Israelites away to mm -hmm. Babylon and enslaved them. Um, but if you think about more about the, some of the details, which he kind of lays out in the book, it helps you think a little bit more deeply. <laughs> even, even though having your, your little children dashed against the rocks and your women raped, I mean, just how much thought have I ever given to that? Pro pro not enough of what that must have been like. But um, Terrible. I mean, awful. Yes, absolutely. And so now when Daniel and his friends got to Babylon, they were uh, re-educated over the course of three years in Babylonian literature and, and customs. So they were immersed in pagan ideas regarding uh, religion, regarding sexuality, the meaning of life. Um, the gods. Yes, the gods. And according to Larry Osborne, who wrote a book called Thriving in Babylon, uh, Babylon was also known for its demonic influences. The state-sponsored religion was satanic, and the core curriculum in the schools of higher learning included large dose of astrology and the occult. Just made me think of our own schools <laughs> and the indoctrination going on there um, into all sorts of immorality. Um, Daniel and his friends were renamed. Daniel actually means God is my judge, but his name was changed to Belteshazzar, meaning Bell's prince. Bell was a title for the demonic god Marduk. Marduk? Murdoch, I'm not sure how you yeah. say that. Mm -hmm. So Lutzer says this would be like having your name changed to Satan's prince. Mm -hmm. Wow. And the, and the names of um, his, free, his three friends were likewise changed, um, also to reflect, reflect Babylonian paganism. Mm -hmm. um, Osborne, who wrote the book Thriving in Babylon, <clears throat> also believes that they were probably castrated. Oh, don't say that. Well, the king's right-hand man was the chief eunuch. That's Daniel 1.3. And this means that though, and that those who served with him would have probably themselves been eunuchs in order to protect the king's harem. Obviously, that's oh my why they. Oh goodness! See, never thought about <laughs> all the details of what this must have been like. And secondly, there's no reference to these men's wives or their genealogy or offspring. And you know, we know how important the genealogies that is are, true. Um, and the importance of marriage and keeping genealogies in Jewish culture. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Wow. You I just mean, ruined Daniel for me. Well, I, I mean, it, it makes... So here they are... Ignorance is blissed at some, some level. You know <laughs> that, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, I do. I can appreciate oh that goodness. at some oh, level. That's not true. That, we're not, there's no definitive proof on that. But no, there's no proof. But um, uh, Lutzer says this. We have no idea how many dreams died in these men when they found themselves in Babylon. Mm -hmm. Dreams of family, dreams of having a home in their beloved city of Jerusalem. They had every reason to hate the Babylonians Absolutely. and Nebuchadnezzar. Absolutely. I mean, our, our situation here in no way even begins to compare at this point with that. Not at this point. Not not at this point. But <laughs> I think a lot of people's dreams are being dashed. I mean, oh, we absolutely. know people who no longer have jobs. My, my my sons don't want to think about it, yeah. about what's going on, because they want to grow up in yeah. the world that we grew up in. And I, I, I don't talk with them about this, about how yeah, bad things either. are, because I I tried before Joan, and it's depressing to them. Mm -hmm. They see it. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're not stupid. They see it. Right. And they, they're just saying, I remember one one of my, I think the youngest said, I just want to go to school. Just mm. hold off a little bit. Let me go to school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just want to go to college. Let me right. find the world is falling apart. But can I, can it just hold off so I can go to college? Because he has a lot to live for. He's he's thriving. Yeah. Uh, D one athlete. But anyway, go ahead. 
Right. So the question, when you th- you consider all these things, the question was how how did how could they move forward in this situation? They were in the service of an evil king who had done them personal harm, let alone their family, their friends, their nations. Um, how how did they go on and live? And they not only lived, but they did thrive, and they they. They conquered. They were victorious in the midst of this. Um, you know, God did actually give some commandments to the Israelites when they were there. You, they were supposed to settle in. They were supposed to have families, um, have children. Uh, talking about the Jeremiah, as you said, yes. Jeremiah is giving instruction. They're going into Babylon. He's, he, he gives them instructions how to live in right. Babylon. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And and two of these instructions were uh, to seek the welfare of the city. Well, that would be oh, the, the state, last yeah. thing. I would, oh, my goodness. And to pray for Babylon. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. This helped for me put, put things in perspective because to go on to see what these men do than how they live their lives. Mm. Um, So, of course, we have to take a stand against the evil in our culture. Correct. But but Pastor Lutzer says, and I think, yeah, I think this is number three, we must do it in a way that never loses sight of Jesus. We have to, we stand against the culture with a redemptive mindset and Correct. i think that's that's the key and that's what you you have always said yep. pastor james when we've gone to these school board meetings or city you know yep. m- meetings in our city when we've stood up when we've spoken out we can't do it like everybody else does right. it. it it has to be pointing out the sin and encouraging repentance has to be you can't go. So when we went to the school board meetings concerning the transgender issue, it wasn't transgenderism bad, transgenderism wrong, bad, 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 shame, shame, shame. That's not what we did. We went to the school board meetings and we said God created the male and female. What you are doing is you are trying to up in and uproot God's creation and that these kids who say they were born in the wrong bodies, they were not born in the wrong bodies. God put them in those bodies. Their bodies are beautiful. You guys are the mm-hmm. one who's, who's promoting transgenderism. You guys are the ones saying that these kids were born in the wrong body. That's not true. God put them in the right body. They're not mistakes. God loves them. And that all of these things that you guys are saying is because you've forgotten God. We've turned away from God as a culture. And we need to return to him. And we need to return to the God of the Bible, repent of our sins, and turn to him. And for that, the Daily Herald said New Hope Community Church was a hate group. <laughs> and we wear that that we, we wear that moniker proudly because we preach the gospel in front of sinners using their sin and their 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 twisting of, of creation and we use it in a redemptive way. Absolutely. Right. And we and we did at the same time we pointed that out all the logical fallacies that yes. were going on, all yes. the inconsistencies, yes. the evil, the harm, etc., and always tried to round it back, though, to, tr- to, yep. to God yep. and, and Jesus and repentance. So, yep. uh, yeah, so that's key. And um, we also, he says, we, uh, Luther says, we also have to take account of the culture to be aware of what's going on in our world and to accept it as far as our conscience allows. and But then, he says, we have to draw the line and say, this far, but no further. So there are lines that we cannot cross. Um, Daniel and his friends, he says, teach us that you can even serve a person who is evil. If you are mature and you know where to draw the line, not everybody is capable of handling such a delicate assignment. Yes. But... Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego 
certainly did. And we don't know enough details. I wish I knew more, but why, more why, details. Why would you say we don't know enough details? I mean, we know enough. Obviously, God gives us enough. But I wish I'd have known, like, the, just the day-to-day, some of the day-to-day so, things of how they. So those of you out there, give us, if you could in the chat, give us some things you think would be good for the panel to discuss now the line because you're saying abby you're saying you wish you would have had more details about life in babylon like what well no you know what i would i I would like to have but it would would have been cool to talk to them we'll be able to talk to them yeah well i know but (laughs) (laughs) but you know i mean when they arrived in babylon after after everything that that had been done to them and their families and their nation and just ha- boy i mean they just must have had their eyes on god yeah because and his sovereign they were young. will and that was it and they were young and they, they they think daniel was like anywhere between 12 to 14 somebody did a good job with that kid <laughs> i mean my goodness oh yeah and you know, you know, it, this comes back to what I was saying before about about fighting, fighting the culture. Daniel fought that culture. I mean, here everybody is bowing down, and there's only one person standing up mm. in front. Of, you know that that statue. Yeah. Okay. The, the three of them uh, mm. that would now, have been don't, his tell, don't tell me that's a sign of supplication and peace. It's not. No. He's like fighting. The three the three boys went because of the, the, the statue. Right, yeah. right, yeah. Yeah. right. Uh-huh. Correct, correct, right. correct. And so, you know, my, my feeling is, is that in this culture, um, we, we shouldn't go without, uh, you know, what we believe to know true, uh, the truth. We don't go quietly into... <laughs> to that night you know what i'm saying We're, we yeah. shouldn't just let people roll over us correct but i really appreciate what was said about the school board and how that was handled mm-hmm. because you know people will view us that we have all this hatred mm-hmm. <laughs> and, right. you know and i'm saying but the truth is the truth and the truth will <laughs> set us free right mm. well, so we did get a question for the panel and might need some clarification. How does Pastor Lutz's silence on the gross errors at Moody Church yet write like this? So Can writing. Can I just say something? Because yes. my husband worked at Moody uh-huh. um, during the time when Lutzer was there. In fact, we were uh, we went there during that time. I don't think he's talking about when he was pastor. I think he's talking about now since oh, he's now. left. Since he's left. But you want to say something about that? Well, uh, that's what I was just gonna say. He what? wasn't he wasn't pastor during what whatever they're saying. I mean, I know the gross that errors, and that's what I'm saying. We might need more might need more clarification. Yeah, what what gross errors are we talking about? Are we talking about when 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 um, Lutzer was pastor, or are you talking about since he's left uh, the pastorate at Moody Church? I guess is 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 the question. So because it be it would be a big difference uh, era when when he is the pastor as opposed to after he's left the office of pastors. Not much. I mean, he's, he's limited once he's left the, the pastor of Moody. So need some, some clarifications on that, some clarification on that. But going back to what you were saying, Abby. Right. So I, I think the two key things here, I, I, think he, I think he's right. This rings true to me that when we do confront the evil we have to do so with a redemptive mindset correct and and we do have to draw lines and you know that we will not cross just like daniel did i mean starting with the food my goodness um yeah i think those those foods were but that's not fighting that's just not crossing the line that's that's right. It's two things. Refusing to do things, but it's not a, it's not civil. <coughs> they weren't. They weren't, in a sense, civil being. Uh, they were, they being were civil in front of that they asked, idol. They asked, that idol was they civil asked to do that, yeah. right? So that was not fighting because they, they weren't asked. fighting. Yes, they did. You mean for they the were food. told to do yeah. this, um, and 
right. when he called them, Nebuchadnezzar called them filled with fury. He asked them, why won't you do this? And now, that, said, that's, the, that's the idol. That was civil disobedience. If you do not worship, you'll be cast in the fiery right. furnace. Yeah. Right. They said, King, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, Correct. and he will deliver us out of your hand. But if not, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image. So they used the situation not to push and fight for liberty and freedom in America. Go. They brought it back to why we won't do this. We will not cross, sure, the, they line cross the line correct. to sin against our God. And who worship, tells us not to do that and we will worship God. him. Yes. So whatever fiery trial comes our way, we'll accept it. Almost but you're it, saying that's it. not fighting that's it. Not fighting. What? Well, how is that not? Yeah. That was that was civil disobedience. Yeah, I mean was, it was a law. It was an edict given to the entire nation, and they said we're not right. we're not going there. And right. and How's what did not? they it, it, what did they bring it back to? It doesn't yeah, matter. It still, doesn't so matter. we're not yeah. going to sin it, against our God. It was right. just, yeah. It so was throw us in the fire. Okay, so maybe huh? a, I, am I maybe I got the word fight wrong here? Maybe the the definition of fight is wrong because I really think they are fighting against well, the civil, edicts. It was clearly civ civil disobedience. Yeah, they didn't obey the king. Right. So let's say it's disobedience, uh, disobedience, or fighting by being disobedient. Well, Martin Luther King mm -hmm. fought. I mean, it was it was I, I don't peaceful think, protest, I don't think but he was fighting. Word. All right. I don't mm -hmm. think fighting can be all negative, can it be? Maybe I don't understand. Maybe I don't no. understand what you're yeah, saying. Yeah. No. No, but it it to me. It can be distracting that Christians should stand up and fight against this evil government. No, we should be disobedient when the laws try to make us commit sin or be sinful and call it out for what it is. But we're not going to oh, pick up arms and revolt oh, okay. so against that's what this he's country. Saying. He's talking about picking up arms. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, that I that's what I mean. Hold, hold, hold on a second. What? Oh, some, some I think some Christians would pick up arms. Yeah, and under the right circumstances, it might be acceptable. Lesser magistrates and whatnot. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I just I I'm, I don't know. Maybe fighting is like a word that some. Some of I us think, don't want to use. I think, I think what, what Chris is saying is armed conflict. Yeah, because I guess fight is a verb. Okay, I, I always do this when I'm on this, this show. I hate to do this, but okay, so fight, take part in violent struggle involving mm. the exchange of physical blows. I mean, is that the only thing? Or, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Well, okay, yeah, I, just because if you, using the word fight doesn't necessarily mean violence. Yeah. You know. I think that's the way he's, uh, Chris so. is. Yeah, like struggle or campaign against. Yeah. That's another definition of fighting. And mm. I think mm -hmm. campaigning against was definitely something Daniel and his friends did. Mm. So it might be the word fight. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they stood up. I mean, he stood up. Yeah. He didn't they stood just, up and were disobedient. He didn't just swallow what the whatever the decree was. Right. Yeah. It just yeah. Said, yeah. To make sure they were not disobedient. To what God told them and what God wanted from them. That's what right. we should always but, be like. And that's what we as Christians should always strive to be. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be disobedient because if when it when it comes to something that may um, that's sinful, like like I like what he said, draw the line and say this is no further. I'm not going to do that. Mm. Um, I'm not going to do that because I consider that stealing. Mm. Right. I had one of those situations with my family years and years ago to use a pass to go to a, an amusement park that was my cousin's. Just, they'll never check that it's it's a five foot three Filipino girl, and I'm a five foot nine, 220 pound white guy. <laughs> like, no, that's stealing. It, I mean, it's a small right. example. The example makes sense. You draw your line, you don't cross it. Yes, yeah, I agree. And I, and I think, you know, that line is gonna be I think there's, there's usually a right and a wrong answer, but I think that, you know, it, conscience, um, what were we talking about the other day? Pastor James, that you said, we don't always know where to draw the line. And part, part of that confusion with when things, everything starts breaking down mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem like there are any good options 
Um, mm-hmm. And there are questions before us that have to be answered and decisions that have to be made. And none of the none of the alternatives seem very good. And you brought up that Paul talked about that um, when he said he uh, basically, well, you know what? I'm doing the best I can. I'm going to let God sort it out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said yes. Which was comforting. Uh, in, 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 in Philippians. Uh, let me go ahead. I'll, I'll get it. Yeah, wow. and I think we're and and we're not all going to agree where the line is, and but Correct. we do have to respect each other's consciences, um, and yes. I think there's a lot going on right now where uh, people's consciences are not being respected. Right. As in yeah. in oh please, I think the point <laughs> is to no, send the, I'm talking about w- within churches like oh, with the oh, vax oh, the and church, the yeah, unvaxed yeah. and the and like. Um, Jack's talking about here, he says um, that Moody is now dividing their members between vaxxed and non-vaxxed. I did not know that. Yeah, but it's mm. not My Pastor goodness. Luther's but he's, he's, he's Pastor Emeritus. I think the Pastor Emeritus is just a title, yeah, Jack. Is. I don't think he's part of the elder board or, or part of the ruling uh, officers there. I, I, I could be wrong, but... Ah, yeah. Not. Yeah. We but, need to go fight him. <laughs> Conscience, conscience is important. Of course. I mean, and the Bible makes it clear that when we violate, if we think something's sin and we go ahead and do it, it is sin, whether or not it actually is sin or not. Oh, it is sin. For whatever doesn't come from faith is sin. That That's sin. So it could literally be a, a situation to where what's sin for you is not sin for me. Right. right. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. Um, go, go ahead. Well, another line, too, is um, not calling out or or explaining sin either right there are some christians who will well i guess if you believe that pro-choice isn't killing a baby no well no that's that's murdering a baby right that's that's a line that i won't cross into um to appease friends family co-workers or to to have peace there if if you're going to try to convince me i'm going to push that's not a line that i'm going to give any ground to right it is it's murder straight up right um, my daughter is, is she's, I think this year she's going to go to Washington for the big march. She is fully involved in it. She's, that's her crusade, mm. so to speak. And oh, that's good for her. I'm super proud of her. Um, but that's another line to, um, giving no, that's sin, calling sin what it is. And then, well, let's, let's soften that so that we can get along as Christians. No, the truth can divide us if you... If other Christians, or even me, if I think, well, that's not what I would want, oh, that's wrong. I, w- I would hope and expect you guys in this room especially yes. to tell me, I, hey, Certain things are black and white. Yep. I mean... Th- you need to think that through. What's God's point of view, not yours? Oop, I, right. I actually got thrown out of a Bible study because of my view on abortion. And I was very kind. You was pro-choice? Uh, oh, my goodness. You are uh, pro-choice? I'm not pro-choice. I'm you got thrown out I'm because pro-life. you were pro-life. You got thrown out of a, a, a Bible study? Yeah. You're joking, I'm not joking. Joan. I'm not joking. And, and, that's and, not a good Bible study, Joan. That's not a good church. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that was actually that, that, a mercy. <laughs> my husband kept on saying, leave that church, Joan. Leave that church. I'm like. That, that was the Lord. <laughs> yeah, really. Pushing you. <laughs> but you, Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I wasn't even like you know just pushing it you know it's just just every day wow. conversation with my what fellow was the justification um. <laughs> wow yeah but i i think it's also good to, you know it's helpful to realize that um that this is not anything you know what is the, what does the verse in second peter say um beloved do not be surprised at the fiery trial that has come upon you as though something strange were happening to you and that's that describes me exactly <laughs> i'm acting as if something strange is <laughs> exactly. happening exactly to me exactly but to, but to pastor james point exactly it's, you're not the only one yeah no you're the majority we, we went and, through yeah. so many decades of just you know, going with the flow. Bliss. Yes, really. Christian Com- bliss. Compared to a lot of nations yeah. around the world, yeah. we would always be hearing about stuff going on in Russia and, and people getting killed in yeah. Africa, and we'd be like, oh, yawn, yawn, yawn. And it's like, okay, now it's our turn. Okay. 
<laughs> you know what I'm oh, saying? Now it's different, right? And, oh, yeah. Now it's different <laughs> for some reason. It's like, wow, no. no. You know, the Bible says that in the end times, what's good is, you know, people are going to say what's good is bad and what bad what's mm-hmm. bad is good. And boy, do I see that. That's and why so I believe That's yeah. not why I, I'm angry. I'm not angry because of what the Bible says. What it, it is is you're surrounded by other people whose faith is way less than yours. And it is very trying. It's frustrating. It's fr- Yeah, it's trying right. and frustrating. And, you know, yeah. I don't want to go loony bin because somebody else is yeah. almost there. It's just you have to keep on you have to keep on reinforcing people. That's why you got to be around the right type of people. That's right. Um, here, That's here, right. You know what? I was mixing up uh, Philippians and Corinthians. Philippians does say forget what lies behind. Press forward. Uh, that's Philippians 3, but uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 4. This then is how you ought to regard us as servants of Christ and as for those entrusted with the mysteries of God has revealed. Now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. I care very little if I am judged by you or by any human court. Indeed, I do not even judge myself. My conscience is clear. But that does not make me innocent. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait until the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of the heart. At that time, each will receive their praise from God. So you, 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 we can go crazy mm-hmm. trying to think that I did the, did I do the right thing. Yes. Did I do the right thing. Did I do the right thing. Did I do the right thing. No, I mean, if it's like Chris was saying, if it's clearly written in Scripture, then then it doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter mm-hmm. what you think your, con- your conscience said. Okay, if it's written in Scripture, but we're talking about the gray lines when society breaks down. The police is not here. A man is walking toward me in the dark, and I've told him to stop three times, and he didn't. And I pull the trigger. James will sleep well that night. I, I told him three times to stop. He didn't stop. We're living in times in which mm-hmm. people are getting murdered all all around us. You know, I, I at that point, and let me tell you something. Uh, I was in Katrina. Hard choices had to be made. Now, thankfully, it never came down to life and death, right? At least not where I was. In other places, it was. It was. But. If chaos ensues in America, uh, and if there's some government upheaval, Christians, some tough choices will have to be made. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you do your best to be honest, straightforward. You give grace and mercy wherever need be. But if you try to hurt my family, James will be the police. In that instance, you have to. You, you absolutely have to, but um, but mm-hmm. I don't I don't think we go crazy. Yeah, and 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 I know, and I came to a real realization some time ago. Guess what? I am not going to get everything right. Wow, yeah. what a revelation! Yeah, yeah. I'm going to really yeah. screw some of these decisions yeah. up. Yeah, but but you do your best. Yes, you 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 do your best, and 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 look at the grace given in the record of scripture. When believers made some tough choices, the, mm-hmm. the the Hebrew wives lied to Pharaoh, saved the children. And I think about this one. I still got to figure this one out. When David was running for his life from Saul and lied to the priest so he could eat, he and his men eat the showbread. Yeah. Yep. Now, you could say you allowed it, but Jesus actually recounts that and said, and David was innocent. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you I got get me. it, but okay. You Bible scholars, please help me out with that yeah, one. Yeah, really? Wow. Uh, because the showbread was only for the priest. He lied and he got the showbread. But again, it was a difficult situation. He made a difficult choice. Right. And he wasn't struck dead. So, I, I mean, I, I think, here, here's my thing. If you get the major known things right, then you have to trust your conscience when you get into the gray areas, the, the tough mm-hmm. areas. But don't be walking one foot in the world, one foot in the church. Right. 
You're you, responsible to have an informed conscience. You're yes. responsible to, yes. to to know God's character, at least is to work at knowing God's character, yeah. which is what comes from from studying your Bible, really. So, so look at this. Um, just going back, talking about difficult choices, gray areas. Uh, going back to Jack says, though a godly man does does his advice regarding the uh, Babylon uh, fall flat given the state of Babylon unopposed at Moody Church. Well, here's the one thing, Jack. We don't know what, it, what he said. We don't know what conversations he's had at Moody. At least I don't. If that could be brought to light, that's fine. I don't know what conversations he had with the elders. Mm -hmm. I don't know what conversations he had with the current pastor. We don't know what has been said or done in that situation. I don't. So it's really difficult to judge him when I don't know. I'm on the outside looking in. I don't know what conversations were had behind closed doors. Luther has a voice and still produces content for Moody Church specifically. Mm. Oh, well, that's a problem. <laughs> that, that, that is a problem. That, I, I got to admit, that is a problem. If you, if you are still hooked up with that church, yeah, that's a problem. Maybe I'll ask him next time I see him. So I, I don't know. We'll see. But, um, yeah, getting back to the whole situation about uh, the church in Babylon, we have we have to stand up and we have to say something, obviously. I guess the big question is, how do you do it? Yeah. The Biden uh, administration's tyrannical. How... how just where's that line, right? I mean, well, it's two things. I, I, uh -huh, I mean, I, I see it as two, and he laid it out as two. When we, when we speak truth, when we, when we call them to account for what they're doing, mm -hmm. we have to do it with a redemptive mindset. Yes. And two, Always. just personally speaking, we have to have line that we will not cross. Personally speaking. And, and then when that, that time comes, we don't cross it. And that's probably going to look different for everybody. It'll look everybody different for different be, people. Yeah, and that's people be, be has to be well informed. For many people, situations. for many people right now, it's the shot. Mm -hmm. Right? The shot is not the line for me. I don't think it's inherently evil to take a vaccine shot. I ain't taking it. <laughs> um... But I, 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 Joan's looking at me like I'm crazy, people. <laughs> well, I'm just thinking, yeah, I mean, this vaccination, one of them used the, uh, the line of an aborted fetus, um, and the other one uh, to, t to test it. Really? Uh, yes. It's and that, in the shot? No. No, no, they used for an testing. aborted fetus for testing. Joan, and do you know how many, how many medications that's on the shelf did that? I well, mean, th that's the if whole... We, if we want to well, start down that road. And that's well, a well, conscience. Wait, wait, wait. I think that's a yeah. conscience well, issue. Yeah, Honestly, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's, I think that's why conscience. the government says to people, it's like, well, tell me, person who it wants the exemption. So... Have you been taking vaccinations all along? Mm -hmm. And now this one, all of a sudden, you're not. Oh, they got a good point there. They got a really good point. No, they because don't. you're right. No, you're right. No, they the don't. hepatitis A vaccination uses fetus, fetal cells, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. And then the, the M and but, M NRA actually has fetus cells inside the vaccination. So we're talking about. That, that's not a good point, though. Yes. Well, for me, it is because I don't. No, I'm saying. I don't use. I. I no, I got you. I'm saying from the government. I don't care if I've taken every vaccine oh. ever put on the shelf before well, now. They you don't own my body. That that it comes down to this: Does the government own your body in the United no, States of America? No, of course not. But but if, but if but you, if you're using the reason, yes, to, the reason what? To, the reason you're saying I can't take this is because my it contains exemption. fetal fetal cells. Then it is a good. Oh, that's point. not my argument. Oh, that yeah, might that, be other that's people's That's right. Argument. That's yeah. not your argument. That's but definitely yeah. some, people some other arguments. people's because not a lot of people would ever take even the flu shot. So mm. well, I, I, I just taking the vaccine. Yeah, right. same here. Uh, but I don't but take again, I, I, I think a person, I think a, I think a true believer can take it. Oh yeah, me too. Um, I, I know a lot of. Yeah, relatives. I would, too, but <laughs> uh, other other people, people, people could. But like I said, it, 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 where's the line? And you're right, Abby. It, it, it'll be different for different people, but I think it should be a well-informed, godly, scriptural reason. Do you know? You know what I'm saying? So, but but anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. um, 
Oh, we're over. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're a little Sorry, over. We're a little over. Thank you all um, <laughs> for for listening to us. No clips today. Just straight talking. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. Anyone else wants to say any parting words as we knock off the church in Babylon? How shall we now live? Thank you all. Thank you, Abby. Thank you, Joan. Thank you, Chris. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night. And remember, Jesus still on the throne. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>